Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for allowing me to present in this conference. My name is Rihanna Gabrahiotz, and I recently completed my master's class from Lin Shopping University in intelligent transport systems and logistics. And I will present my master's project on the topic of traffic simulation of automated shuttles in Lin Shopping University campus. And my advisors are Johan Olstam from Swedish Road and Transport Institute and Jan Pang Flatrad from Baylor. So automated shuttles are one of uh, the AVs that are designed to provide a cleaner transportation that reduces uh, emissions and energy usage. And their main goal is to provide a service that can fulfill first and last mile gaps. So there are several pilot studies in different countries around the world. And the focus of this thesis is on the pilot study in Linköping, Sweden. The, the research consists of two autonomous shuttles and began uh, the operation began on 6th of December, 2019. And it runs for uh, two years and they operate on 2.1 kilometer fixed route. And the aim of this thesis is to model, calibrate, and validate the free driving behavior of automated shuttle in SUMO using the collected data from the demonstration trial. The operation route uh, of the automated shuttles uh, is shown in the figure on the left. And it has eight predefined uh, stations. And it consists of three different parts. The first part is an undivided two-way street where the shuttle shares a space with the conventional vehicles. And the second part is a, a one-way street uh, with roadside parkings. And the, the third uh, uh, part is a bicycle path where uh, the shuttle shares a space with bicycles. So the data analysis uh, is done considering the data collected by one of the shuttles. And when it was providing service to passengers in auto navigation mode. The figure at the top is the speed profile for the whole operation route. It's plotted speed versus uh, distance. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, this different numbers, uh, one, two, three, represent different parts of the shuttle route. And we can see that there's different maximum operation speed, speed at different parts of the shuttle route. And the figure at the bottom uh, shows the acceleration profile along the shuttle route uh, yeah, for the whole lap. From this figure, we can see that the acceleration rate of the shuttle is below 0 0.5 meter per second square, almost uh, always. The deceleration rate is between uh, 2.43 below zero and 2.3 meter per second square. So in order to see how the shuttle operates on a free road, uh, the free speed uh, profile is obtained from the observed speed profiles. And this is uh, the last segment uh, speed profile and acceleration profile and selected to present the analysis and simulation results. So to obtain the free driving speed profile from the speed, the, uh, yeah, from the speed profiles, uh, the speed profiles were clustered using uh, with k-means clustering with six clusters, and uh, the speed, uh, the free, yeah. So most of the speed profiles didn't fit into the clusters in Troid, so. Uh, there, therefore, the free driving speed profiles was obtained from the clusters that have a centroid which follows the upper profile, in this case, cluster four. And this, for this segment, the free driving speed profile is shown in this figure on the right. As we can see, uh, <clears throat> the uh, acceleration is around 0 0.45 for the free driving. Uh, meter per second square for the free driving condition and the deceleration rate is 0 0.48 meter per second square and even though the uh, segments free of traffic the shuttle operates at different speed so when it's leaving from from the station it accelerates up to 
2.5 meter per second square, and then it starts to decelerate. The possible reason for this deceleration can be the uh, parking entrance, which is located at this blue dotted line, and uh, the vehicle, the shuttle might have interaction with uh, the vehicles that are entering and leaving the uh, parking uh, lot. And then it accelerates again, and that attains the shuttle's the segment's maximum speed, and then it starts to decelerate. And again, the possible reason for this deceleration can be the intersection, which is located at this location. And then it uh, finally decelerates to down to stop, to make a stop at the next station. So at the analysis of the, the, and the analysis for the whole segment implies the shuttle has different maximum speeds at different uh, locations. Uh, so the shuttle decelerates, for example, when leaving stations, few meters before intersections, few meters before parking entrances, and when approaching roadside parking, and when there is merging bicycle paths and building entrances. So in this uh, simulation, uh, only a single shuttle is uh, considered, and defining one maximum speed value in the simulation model is not enough because the shuttle has different maximum operations, uh, operation speed at different location. Therefore, uh, the link speed is set for uh, different parts of the shuttle route by mimicking the free driving speed from the data. And then the Krauss and IDM car following models are analyzed by tuning the acceleration and deceleration parameter values. And for this purpose, five different mm, uh, parameter settings are uh, set with different combination of uh, acceleration and deceleration uh, parameters. And this, then the simulation was run for the five parameter settings using the Krauss IDM and IDM models and the free driving speed and acceleration profiles from both uh, simulation and observation are presented in this slide. The figure at the top uh, represents uh, presents the uh, result from the cross car following model for parameter setting one and parameter setting uh, four. And the figures at the bottom shows the uh, uh, result from the IDM car following model for the same parameter setting as in the cross car following model. Uh, so the red lines here uh, are the speed profiles from the data and the blue lines are the speed profiles from the simulation model. And the cyan and the pink colors are, um, uh, uh, yeah, the, cyan, the pink and cyan colors are the acceleration profiles from SUMO and the data respectively. So the speed profiles from both uh, models follow the general trend. Mm, and however, the uh, deceleration uh, ha is in, in parameter setting one is close to the observation, while the in parameter setting four uh, it's uh, uh, higher. These parameter settings are derived when there is interaction and parameter setting one is derived when the shuttle is operating on a free road. So to provide a closer look, a speed pro and acceleration profiles for the last segments are presented for both the uh, cross and the IDM car following models with parameter setting one and parameter setting four. Here, there's an additional green line uh, in these figures which is the virtual speed uh, derived from the data. And it was used as input to the SUMO model. The speed profile from Krauss and the IDM model, I mean, from the Krauss has a, a sharp curve compared to the IDM model, which is more smooth. And the, the speed profiles from one, for example, Krauss Carfoli model in both parameter setting looks more or less the same. Uh, even for the IDM, it might look the same, but if we look closer, there are minor difference can be spotted. For example, when decelerating at this point, this uh, profile looks somewhat inclined, and when it is the, 
uh, in parameter setting for it's more of a straight line, which means when the deceleration parameter is higher, the, the shuttle is able to attain the desired uh, speed uh, instant, instantly. And in IDM car following model, when the deceleration parameter is low, this, the, the shuttle starts to decelerate uh, earlier to attain the desired speed uh, at uh, this location. And if, if we compare it with the higher deceleration uh, rate, uh, this deceleration starts more later. And we can see the acceleration uh, profile is more close to the data or the observation when it's in parameter setting one, while the parameter setting four is more higher. So to evaluate different parameter settings against the data, a root mean square error uh, is calculated from the observed giant simulation speed over distance for each segment. And the RMSC values for parameter setting one, uh, two, and four are presented in this figure because they have a better agreement with the data for both cross and IDM model compared to the other two parameter settings. The top three lines are uh, for from the cross uh, car following model, and the bottom three lines are from the RMEC values from the IDM uh, car following model. And we can see that uh, the cross has higher RMEC value, uh, meaning it's less uh, it less agrees with the uh, measurement. And the best parameter setting or with the lowest RMC value is from the uh, parameter setting one in IDM model. And the second best model uh, parameter setting is uh, parameter setting two, which is a green line. The model, uh, the IDM Carfoli model with parameter setting one, two, and four are validated using the free driving speed from the data set from the validation data set. Uh, so this plot illustrates the speed and acceleration profiles from the validation data set and the simulation data set, uh, the simulation result with parameter setting one uh, as an example. So the speed profile uh, follows the general trend for all uh, the three parameter settings. RMEC values are estimated for uh, the validation as well. And in these figures, RMEC values from the calibration, which is the red line, and the validation, which is the blue line, are presented for the three parameter settings. And generally, it can be said that the free driving speed in the calibration and the validation data set are very similar to each other and the model is able to reproduce the observed speed, um, the observed free driving speed in the validation data set. And when we come to the conclusion, so in all parameter settings, the speed profiles from both um, the CROFs and IDA models follow the general trend uh, of the speed profile from the measurement. The IDA model has a smooth uh, transition while the Cross model produced sharp curves when trying to attain the desired speed at the start and end of an acceleration or deceleration phase. For the simulation of the free driving condition, the best uh, results are, are obtained when using parameter setting one and two with IDM models. So even though the parameter setting one for the free drive, the free driving can be captured well, the deceleration parameter values can be too low, especially uh, for the simulation of interaction parts later on, because there were situations where the shuttle, the shuttle, <clears throat> the deceleration is higher in the measured data, and uh, this parameter setting might limit the performance of the shuttle. Therefore, if interaction simulation is uh, to be done, a higher value of deceleration parameter might be required to capture the interaction behavior accurately. 
And thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions and comments, you're welcome.